Southern Quality Ford Friday Night Blitz continues. Welcome back to the Southern Quality Ford Friday Night Blitz. Big slate of games here, so let's head back into Arkansas. Arkansas High originally supposed to play Magnolia High this week. Instead, taking on Southside and picking it up here, as I said, trying to take or taking on Southside. Southside starting things off. Fourth down carry, a storm of Razorbacks bringing down the ball carrier. Turnover on downs. Now Southside getting a stop back on offense. It's going to be more of the same, but here comes the point. So QB dropping back. Braylon Bishop hooking up with Tavry Green. Green, what a catch. Coming down with the touchdown right there. Arkansas High 2-0 to start out the season as they get the 21-6 win. Ashdown looking to stay unbeaten at home against Harmony Grove tonight. We only show you these if something exciting happens. My goodness, what a pop right there from let's see the kid's name Ford Young. It's Alec Kellebach now dropping back finding Davdrin Goffin Goffin. He won't go down. Slippery still chugging down the field. Finally going to be brought down but not before he gains 30 yards. It's Kellebach now calling his own number. He's in for a touchdown and I believe yep Ashdown staying undefeated. Winning 35 to 7 over Harmony Grove. Let's head over to Texas now. Carthage on the road taking on Gilmer. This is just the second game of the season for the Bulldogs, but getting to work early. Mason Courtney getting the feed, finding the end zone. But the Chiefs at 6 to nothing. Now later in the first, QB Kai Horton going downfield. He's going to connect with Braden Wade in the back of the end zone. Great catch right there by Braden. That extends the lead to 13. Now in the second, Bulldogs keeping the offense going. Horton on the play action, finding Montrell Smith coming across the middle for another Carthage touchdown. All Bulldogs tonight getting the big win over Gilmore. 42 to 14 the final. All right, so Texas High opening the season at newly renamed Tyler High. They're up 6-0. Still in the first quarter. Lions now trying to run a draw, but Clayton Smith, there's a reason OU wants him. The OU commit stops him right in the tracks for no gain. Then in the second, Texas High putting together another solid drive. Vontre Anderson capping it off from two yards out, extending that Tigers lead 13 to nothing. Tyler, though, they will respond. Kenyante Pinkard fires it deep, looking for his man McCavey and Potts. Potts comes down with it, sits the defender down, and the defender's like, I mean, what can I even do with that? They're cutting that lead 13 to 7 at the half, but Texas High, they'd explode in the second half. They'd go on to win it 41 to 21. Now, another season opener here. This one is Marshall taking on New Caney, and things going Marshall's way early. Miscommunication by the Eagles and the Mavs are going to jump on the loose ball for the turnover, and that's going to get their offense going here. Mavs marching down the field, and this is going to be Dominic Williams coming across the middle. He is going to grab the catch there, take it inside the 10-yard line. They'd be able to get a field goal to lead it by three. But from there, New Caney taking over, keeping it on the ground. They are going to punch it in, taking a 7-3 to lead. Marshall trying to answer back, but on offense here, leading the receiver a little bit too much. Zion Childress forcing the ball out. Adrian Bauer there for the interception, and they are going to turn that into more points. C.J. Sanders in for the easy score. That one is going to make it 14 to 3. Now Marshall able to rally in the second half and this one. They come back to get the win 34 to 26. All right, final. so some uh, fireworks in decap tonight. The Bears hosting Dangerfield. Zaylin Jeter takes the snap, scrambling around. He's got all day to throw the football. My favorite part of the play, spinning the ball in his hand. He says, you know what? He's going to casually drop a 35 yard dime to Lathan Saucita for the touchdown. Couldn't have drawn it up any better. That's exactly how they practice it, Brad. They go for a two-point conversion. They're going to get it. Running back runs it into the corner of the end zone. Dangerfield ahead 8-2. to two. All right, DeKalb quarterback A.J. Burgeon. Burgeon's going to take the snap, uh, calls his own number. A little quarterback sweep here, makes a guy miss. Going to be brought down, but not before gaining a first down, and then some later in the drive. Going to call his own number. Going to cap things off here. Going to score a touchdown, and they would make the extra point, but Dangerfield, they get the seven point victory, 36 to 29 over Decap. Tatum back in action after missing the last few weeks on the road at Gladewater tonight in first quarter Gladewater ball. Tristan Holmes dropping back, DJ Allen running a slant, and that is easy money for the touchdown. 
Tatum with the ball now. Kendrick Malone sees Eli oh. Cates coming for him. Cates sticks those hands up, picks off the ball. Going to be seeing this one over and over tonight. This Bear is excited. Oh. We're all here in the studio a little terrified there. <laughs> Second quarter, Bears ball. Holmes looking deep, and I mean really deep. DJ Allen, pretty solid connection. Another score right there. Gladewater running away from Tatum. I think Tatum running away from that Bear. 42 <laughs> to 21, the final I'll score. I'll never not be running away from that bear. Down in 2A, Joaquin, you're 3-0 in the season at home tonight against Clarksville Rams. You're establishing the run early. It's kind of what they do, Brad. Cole Bragg weaving through traffic. This one will go for 18 yards. The Rams picking up at least seven yards of pop on this drive and then down to the two-yard line. That's Gage Jordan taking the handoff and going in for the score. Tigers on offense, uh, they couldn't get anything going all night. The Rams defense really holding their own. And Joaquin, they stay undefeated tonight, 40 to 10 over Clarksville. Timpson putting up big points week after week tonight, hosting James Bowie and into the first quarter. Timpson already up 27 to nothing and adding to it right here. Another touchdown, keeping it on the ground, extending that lead to 34. Now here comes more Bears offense here. KT Washington on the carry hops over a diving pirate defender, but eventually going to be brought down there by the James Bowie defense. Pirates trying to get something going on offense here. Ethan Fields tries to get the edge, unable to get it, is forced out of bound. And the Bears answering here with a big play. Long touchdown run. No one is going to be able to catch him or bring him down. Great downfield blocking by the receiver right there. Timpson rolls to a big win over James Bowie tonight at their homecoming game 55 to 6 the final score. Timpson knows how to score points. Redwater making the short drive to hooks tonight. Taking on the Hornets. It's the third quarter. David McKeever taking the handoff, diving in for the one yard touchdown. So uh, Redwater, uh, they're, they're going to go for a two point conversion and uh, I got a feeling that they're going to get it. Yeah, because that's what it says in the script. All right, pushing them in the end zone. Two pointer good. So we have got Hooks quarterback now, Benji Johnson, Mr. Benji Johnson. He's a quarterback. He's going to do as quarterbacks do, Brad. He's going to try and throw the football. Looking for his man, David Johnson. Johnson hauling it in. Nice gain here. Finally going to be pushed out of bounds. Maybe he just steps out of bounds right there. So close to an incredible touchdown. But they're going to mark him down deep inside the red zone. And then later in the drive, Devarius Clark. He is going to get in the end zone. He's going to score the touchdown. And Hooks, they beat Redwater 24-14 to tonight. Tinaha at home hosting Love Lady, and this is Love Lady's QB taking the snap, throwing a dart to Kevon Skinner. He is going to break a tackle for a nice game before brought down. Very next play, and they're going to go back out to Skinner once again. This time, that connection is going to lead to a touchdown. Look at Skinner able to keep his feet in right there. Now Tigers on offense and they are going to go to Trey Tut. Great get, grab by Tut there in traffic and that's going to lead to this score right here by Jeremy Patton right there. That would give Tittahaw a 7-6 to six lead. Now check out this love lady on offense. QB taking a shot downfield but it's going to be picked off by Trey Tut saying his name on both sides of the ball. Big win for Tittahaw tonight as they take down love lady 41-18 to 18, the final score. Well, some district play tonight as Queen City takes on a Legion Fields and West. Don't really know how many district games these teams are actually going to be able to get in this year. It's a very good point, Brad. It just makes them even more important. Tonight, Emma Kate Few is in Elysian Fields for our game of the week. What an exciting night in East Texas as district play kicks off. The Elysian Fields Yellow Jackets hosting the Queen City Bulldogs. Now last year the Jackets won this matchup 51 to 6. And the Bulldogs are actually going into this game with a 3-0 record. But I do know one thing, somebody in orange is getting the W tonight. Let's get to the highlights. The Yellow Jackets starting things off a little sloppy. Ryan Wilkerson's pass is intercepted right near the end zone. The Bulldogs try to answer, but the Jackets defense keeps them from capitalizing on the turnover. No gain on the drive, and it's Jackets ball again. Wilkerson's pass to Landon Swank. It's good, and he's off heading to the end zone to put up the first six of the night, it won't be his last. The Bulldogs answer with this electric pass to Demir Rasco. Sets Queen City up for their first six. Now they don't get the extra point, so it's 7-6. Isaiah Stinger runs it in for the Bulldogs. 
The extra point is short, 7-6 Jackets. Wilkerson on the quarterback keep. He runs it deep into Bulldogs territory. Jackets start the second with another touchdown. Now this is their quarter, guys. The momentum completely shifts in their favor. Wilkerson to swank again, giving the Jackets a 14-6 lead. And now they're on a roll. William Goodnight bringing it into the end zone for the Jackets now. Good night, Bulldogs. 21-6 Elysian Fields. It's Bulldog ball now, but not for long. It's a fumble on the handoff, and the Jackets recover. Wilkerson finds Jackson Illingworth open. He runs it in for another Jacket touchdown. Jackets again. Wilkerson to Braden Manning, the 6'3 freshman, y'all. And if it wasn't all Jackets already, another turnover for the Bulldogs. Logan Presley with the pick. Now Jackets in the second quarter the way they started it. Another touchdown. Wilkerson hands it off to Kyle Story, who makes it 46 Jackets at the half. Jackets go on to win it 54-12. It's a home game, it's our first district game, and it, and it counts towards our ultimate goals of getting in the playoffs and making a run at championships. So it feels really good. Not our quarterback, Ryan Wilkerson, played his best game of the year. I think when we needed to throw the football, he was on the money, and uh, he's always a threat running it, and I thought he did a good job tonight of taking care of the football. It felt great. I mean, we, we started off the first or the second half kind of bad, but, you know, we got the points rolling on the board, and, I mean, got everybody happy, and we were rolling. Every game is the same uh, amount important, and we got to do that carry on to the playoffs. Reporting in Elysian Fields, I'm Emma Kate Few. All right, Emma Kate, thank you. So, big win there for Elysian Fields, able to bounce back from last week's loss against Danger Field and 1 0 to start out district play. It's always huge, again, especially not knowing how many district games you're going to get to play. And I'm, to be honest, I'm kind of curious to see how it all plays out because. Just the way things have gone so far through these first five weeks of the season, it, it's, it, would be a, it would be amazing if every single district game is played. So I'm going to be curious to see, you know, how they weigh things out. But kind of like you said, starting off district play with that win, you're in the driver's seat. You kind of control your own destiny. And with this one, it was a, a big win on both sides of the ball. This Queen City team had been putting up big numbers through the first three uh, games of the season. We're undefeated coming into this one. Looked like pretty much completely shut down. Elysian Fields offense, Ryan Wilkerson has been under center now for a couple of years. So getting some college looks, you could see why. Kind of just able to put the ball wherever he wanted to tonight. So big win for Scott Ford and the Elysian Fields Yellow Jackets. And all that means is now you got to move on to the next week and get this momentum going. I have a question for you. They're called the Yellow Jackets, but they're orange. And I, it's just, it, it, for me, you know, I, I've never heard of an orange jacket, but I, I could live with it if they were called the Orange Jackets. You know, maybe it's like, maybe it's the giant Crayola 64 pack where yeah. there's all kinds of different shades. You're and stuff. right. Maybe it's like the macaroni and cheese I'm one. Exactly. I'm just not looking at the jerseys right. But <laughs> in terms of a uniform matchup, two great uniforms on the field tonight. Orange looks really good. It always looks good on yeah. the field. Look, I'm a it's Texas clean. fan, yeah. so, you know, I like to see burnt orange on the field anyways, even though I went to Texas Tech. It's a little <laughs> weird. Don't ask me about it. Uh, but so I always like to see uh, <laughs> some, some orange there on the field. Of course. Well, coming up on the Southern Quality Forward Friday night, Blitz. We're going to check out this week's top plays. Stay with us. Hey! 